we live in a, such a divided society. Um, we are Republican and Democrat, we're liberal, we're conservative, uh, we're black, we're white, we are Catholic, we're Protestant, we're this, we're that. And we divide up and, and, and magnify and emphasize our differences rather than things that we have in common. Fuller believes that every community has the wherewithal, talent, resources, and tools to provide housing for all its people. Uh, in the late 1970s, uh, when I was down in Fort Myers, there was just a little handful of people there, and they had a dream of starting to build houses for low-income families in a neighborhood called Harlem Heights, a neighborhood as bad as Allendale was two years ago when we started here. And they didn't have any money. And I said, we, we're going to build on faith. And they said, what does that mean? I said, what it means is get out here and get a lot, put up a sign that says, you know, uh, uh, Lee County, they decided to name their group Lee County Habitat Humanity. I said, put up a sign and start digging a foundation. And they said, but what if we don't have any money? I said, it doesn't matter. You can get, you probably get somebody to donate a couple of shovels and just start digging. And, and they said, well, what if we don't have any money by the time we get through digging? I said, fill the dirt in and, you know, and keep digging, fill it in. And you, you got to have the, you give the, give the impression of progress. You got to continue to move ahead. So you know what? Those guys did what I asked them to do. They put up a sign and they got out there with no money and they started digging the foundation. Literally about a week later, they called me up in America. They were so excited. They said, Miller, you won't believe what happened. I said, tell me. They said, well, we did what you told us. We put a sign up out there and we got out there and we started digging. And a guy came by in a car and he stopped. And he came over there and he said, what are you guys doing? And, 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 and they said, we told him that we are going to build some houses here. And the guy said, uh, well, tell me about this program. He says, well, it's a Christian program and uh, it's called Habitat for Humanity. Nobody knew that name at that time. And we're gonna build houses and sell them at no profit and no interest uh, to very, very low income families. And, and the guy said, well, who's funding this? And he said, we have no idea. <laughs> And the guy said, you need help. They said, you catch on quick. <laughs> that guy, true story, paid for the first house. Total stranger that came by and saw them digging in the dirt. And he paid for the first house. That's what you call building on faith. Hundreds of volunteers come from all over the country to once forgotten neighborhoods to build new beginnings. It's frustrating to me to, to not be able to get some people excited uh, because I'm so excited <laughs> and, and I know what we're doing makes such a huge difference in the lives of people. Oh, yeah. All these three houses built and completed, oh, yeah. Guinness is oh, yeah. Let's go to work. What all of us remember who know him well is that he works harder than any of us. He's always moving forward in realization of some hope for a poverty-stricken family who doesn't have a decent house. So when the rest of us just work part-time on weekends or maybe one week a year to build a house, Miller is there 52 weeks a year, all day long, every day, working around the world. Volunteer workers are the glue that holds the effort together. Some are experienced, most are not. But they all pick up hammers and trowels, confident that their efforts are making a difference. These new homes they build are doing more than transform lives. They're transforming communities. We need a lot of other people to come help us build houses. Let's let them have it. Oh, yeah. I, want, I want all of you to to meet a hero of this project. This is Marion Taylor from Illinois, and he is the man who brought the framing here. The framing that you'll be putting up today was built by prisoners in Illinois. The, the materials were paid for by Lutheran Social Services of Illinois, and Marion Taylor not only brought this framing and got it here on time, but he delivered framing for eight houses over in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, always on time. 
He's a dedicated man, and we just appreciate him so much. Let's give him a big hand. In 2005, the Fullers' relationship with Habitat for Humanity International ended, and they formed the Fuller Center for Housing. The need for adequate housing is huge. And, and even though uh, through Habitat for Humanity we had built housing for a million people and we had spread it into a hundred countries, still the needs were enormous. We did continue to build at no profit and no interest and challenge churches and civic clubs and companies to come with us. But we also uh, came to realize, for example, that there were literally millions of people in their uh, late 70s, in their 80s, even in their 90s, uh, who own their own home, but the front porch is falling off. Uh, the bathroom leaks, uh, the, the roof has sprung a leak, and two windows are broken, and they just don't have the money to fix it. Uh, their sole income is a Social Security check in many cases. So we came up with the idea of a greater blessings box. We decided to form a program uh, whereby we would recruit volunteers and uh, the Fuller Center would uh, solicit and raise money from concerned and caring and generous people. And we would provide the materials and fix up these homes for these elderly people. Instead of putting a mortgage on the house, because at age 80 or 85, the last thing in the world you need is another legal obligation, we would say, we have fixed up your broken down front porch, we've fixed the roof and those two broken windows you've got, and we've spent $5,000. We want to give you the opportunity to now receive the greater blessing by paying the money back. But we don't want to make it an obligation for you. But if we gave you the opportunity to pay the money back, over what period of time could you do it? So they sit down at the table and they say, well, my groceries are so much a month and my medicine is so much and I have so much for this and this and this. I think if you gave me four years, I could do it. So you put 48 envelopes in the greater blessing box. And you say every month, you just take out one of those envelopes and mail in one forty-eighth of it. But if one month you're sick or you have unexpected bills, you know, just don't send your envelope in that month. But you got to understand that this is simply giving you an opportunity to receive the greater blessing. Because if you don't pay any of the money back, there'll be no consequences. No collection agency is going to knock on your door. No lawyer is going to write you a letter. But we want you to know if you do in fact pay the money back, we will use it to help somebody else. And what we've experienced over the last two and a half years is that most people are paying the money back. They, they want to receive the greater blessing. They want to pass it on. They don't like the idea of being a recipient of charity. They, they want to, uh, obviously they want their front porch fixed and the leak stopped and so forth, but giving them this opportunity to pass it on is a very attractive idea, and that's a new wrinkle that has never been used before. We have a major effort underway in Shreveport, Louisiana, where we have been building houses for hurricane evacuee families. We had to put in 350 sweat equity hours, which that meant we all came out, everyone pitched in. I mean, you had people from all over the world just willing to help and give a helping hand to help us, you know, to build a home. In December of last year, I was over in West Point, Georgia, in Lynette, Alabama, my home area, and I met with these folks from the valley. And I said, you ought to eliminate poverty housing in the Chattahoochee Valley, where I was raised. And they all realized that it would take millions of dollars. They had the organizing meeting in January. Within two months, they had raised $400,000. And by June, six families had already moved in. It does not say, with, all, with God, all things are easy. <laughs> what we've set out to do is not easy, but it is possible. One of the problems that I dealt with was creeping affluence. Uh, we live in a society where everybody wants bigger of everything. Everybody wants a bigger car, everybody wants a bigger house, they want a bigger everything. We're really trying to emphasize uh, adequate but modest houses that are energy efficient. Uh, we are really trying to go green in everything that we do and that you don't have a lot of extra space, but you have adequate space. Good creative design so that instead of building uh, a 1,500 or 1,600 square foot house, you build a 900 or a 1,000 square foot house, but because you have a good design, it's adequate for the family. Taxes are lower, utility bills are lower, 
and everything is affordable to people on limited income. Sustainability is uh, very, very important to us because uh, the people for whom and with whom we are building are people with limited incomes. You don't need to uh, build or renovate a house which is going to be falling apart a year or two years down the pike. There's just not enough land to continue to, to spread out. Uh, we've got to figure out a way to put more people in a smaller space and be more creative in terms of uh, how do you move people from point A to point B with public transportation, smaller automobiles, smaller houses, uh, because what is happening and what has been happening uh, now for a number of years cannot be sustained. There is more work to do to address the housing crisis for working people, for the homeless, and for those with mental illness. There are many communities in this country where policemen, teachers, the people who do very, very important tasks in society, they can't afford to live where they work. So they have these long commutes, and of course that adds huge expense uh, with the high cost of fuel. We've got to come up with some better policies so that people can afford to live where they work. And that's a political problem that needs to be dealt with. According to his biographer, the vision of Millard Fuller goes beyond building houses for a few. They are building hope for many. The Fuller Center for Housing is growing dramatically. Uh, we're only two years old and we are already in nine states in the U.S. and we're in five other countries. We've just launched a hundred house project in El Salvador, largely for single women with children. We want to invite others to come down and join us. We've, this is one of 100. When I came this morning and saw this, it's like I got the chills and I wanted to cry. We've launched an 80 house project in Nigeria and we are in consultation currently with at least uh, people and groups in a dozen other states in this country and half a dozen other countries. In 2007, the Georgia Real Estate Investment Association broke new ground by challenging their members to donate land for Fuller Center houses. An Atlanta conference celebrated the first donation. I have never been a part of an organization that has taken off and has, had, has created so much excitement as this new group of the Fuller Center for Housing. And Lynn and I feel so excited and so optimistic uh, to be a part of this new effort, which, which we hope uh, over the coming years is going to increasingly be a force uh, that is speaking to society about this problem of inadequate housing for those who are not able to afford conventional means of getting an adequate place to live. I'm in great health and high spirits. Uh, and I think if I live a normal life, uh, God will give me another 10 years. And in that 10 years, it is my hope, uh, it is my uh, expectation that this new venture that we have launched will become a very, very significant force in building homes for low-income families and renovating other houses for families in need so that it uh, has a, a significant impact uh, on the problem of inadequate uh, and substandard housing. Usually we can work together really well, but it seems like on a construction site, you know, he knows more than I do, and then I think I know more than he does, and, you know, we have this little thing going, no, do it this way, no, do it that way, but we get it done. Right. <laughs>